guys, it's Graham. Four or five months ago, I decided I wanted to do an upgrade on my Predator to include Magball arms. Now, I know you can buy these online or from other sources, but as I've got all the necessary machines, I decided that I would uh, attempt to make my own, which I did, and they have worked really well since then. This is the version, what I call one, of uh, my arms and uh, they incorporate carbon fiber eight millimeter tube for the arm and each end I made some machined Delwyn um, couplings that uh, contain the magnets and uh, they are set at 440 millimeters length. I made a set of these and installed them on my Predator and they've worked really, really well for the last, or as I said, three to four months since I made them. But uh, there were a couple of little aspects about these that I wasn't extremely happy with in the way that I made them and machined them. And I was a little concerned about the absolute accuracy of the length of all of them um, due to the way I assembled them on my jig. So I wanted to make another set and uh, I've just done so and I call these version two. They are running on the machine now. I've done some test prints with them and they're looking uh, really, really good. And I haven't had to make any adjustments to the arm length because the new ones are the same length as the previous ones. So uh, this video is just to show you how I machined the ends, assemble them together, and just to give you an idea for anyone who wants to attempt to make their own. I don't intend to sell these, uh, but I am providing on my website, and the link is, will be in the video, uh, drawings of the uh, ends and the type of uh, magnets that I use, so that anyone with appropriate uh, machines, and basically all you need is a lathe to make these, uh, you'll be able to make your own. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and uh, find it useful. I wanted to show you why I chose the type of magnets that I did and why they're uh, extremely strong. These are the ones I use. They uh, have a construction where it's a north and south, north on one side, south on the other side with a separator in between. So when the ball goes in there, it basically it's like completing the circuit between the north and south. And it's the reason these magnets are extremely strong as I can't get that apart as compared to 
this, um, this other type of magnet that you see here. That comes apart easily, whereas with this one, I have to use a lot of force to get that apart. So that's why these can uh, hold up to around 3.5 kilograms. What I'm going to do now is assemble the um, magnetic ends. I've got the magnetic socket, I would call it. I put a little bit of red Loctite, which is permanent Loctite, into the end of it. There we go. That goes up into there. I then got an M3 screw with a spring washer and a normal washer on it that I drop down into there, screw it up nice and tight, and that's not going to move. That's the first one assembled. I'll now do the other three. Now I'm about to assemble the last two arms. I've got the carbon fibre arms ready. I've got the magnetic Delrin ends assembled with the magnets already inserted. And um, what I do first is I take the Araldite that I've pre-mixed and I place up on the inside here. A good amount and I swish it around because I've got some grooves on the inside that will lock everything into position once the Araldite is set. Now I've done that, I put that down, I put a little bit of Araldite around the rod where I have lightly machined. I've got about probably 10 minutes to do this before the Araldite gets too solid. Then I slide this in, move it in and out, and twist it around a little bit. Okay, that's the first one done. All these magnets tend to stick, so I'll just stick that, put that up there for the moment. I'll get the next end Ready, put the Araldite in the end. I hope you can see what's going on because I can't really see the camera. So that's done, put that aside. I then take the other rod end and uh, put a little bit again of Araldite, just by doing both the rod and inside the Delrin magnetic ends, I'm ensuring that I've got a really good coating. And then, making sure the other one end doesn't fall off, slide this one up, twisting it around as I go, moving it in and out a few times. And uh, that's it, I've got quite a bit of extra there. I make sure that these are both all the way up to the ends because they tend, will tend to slide off as I do that. Once I've done that one, I will get the other two Dolan ends on. What I do now is I use a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol because that allows me to clean these ends up fairly well and I'm just going to run around that 
to clean off the excess. It's just easier to clean this up before the araldite goes off than uh, do it after. And I find um, isopropyl alcohol works extremely well. There, they're all clean. That one's, let's see, that's what happens when they get close to each other. This one's done. Okay, now, clean my fingers. Sticky stuff around. Now I've got my jig here, and I, what I do first is I let one end attach, and this other end is locked in position. When I cut the rod lengths, I cut it a little bit shorter so that I can literally push this down and it's not into the magnet. And then I literally just slide these out and then just move that back and forward. You see, I've got probably about three millimeters of movement in that. And then this one goes down and I just gradually pull on that and the rod, this rod also has about three millimetres, three or four millimetres of movement and uh, that's it. They're, they're locked in position. Give that a little bit of a wiggle, make sure that it, the magnets are secure. Then I just go through these again and just just make sure that everything's all nicely cleaned up. And uh, that's done. So my mag ball arms have been sitting in the jig overnight just to ensure that the araldite has completely gone off. It's good to leave it at least 12 to 24 hours. I uh, keep a bit of the uh, remnants left over so I can just check to make sure that's completely solid. And um, now it's time to remove the arms from the jig. Now, both ends of the jig are clamped solidly into position. I could just stretch that out, but I don't want to put any stress on the arms at all. It's just not a good thing to do. So the way that I made the jig was that I can, I just loosen the nuts or the screws on this end and push that out, releases the arms and Pull those out and there you go they're all complete and uh, that's now I've got six arms all done and complete all precisely the same length so I'm pretty happy with all of that now I just want to explain one thing about this jig in the fact that after doing each set of arms, I'm moving this part out to release the arms, but returning it back into its fixed position, which is the set 440, so that every arm is the same length. I've got two um, M6 sc screws here, and I use a square to make sure that both arms are exactly the same length and I set the length these are solidly done up they remain secure so after I've removed each arm all I do is just push that back put some force on it hold it in position do these up again and it stays exactly in that position so that every arm is exactly the same so I just wanted to uh, cover that little last bit for you so now I'm ready to install the arms and test. I use a little bit of um, lubricant 
on the, the ball and in the end here. What I chose to use was a product called, an oil called Whey Oil. It's an oil that's designed for uh, machinery, um, like for lathes and milling machines and that sort of thing, for uh, the, the ways in those, uh, in those machines. And um, it's, a very, it's a quite a light oil, but it uh, lubricates extremely well. And you, you don't need much. You just literally need a tiny pinprick of a dab on, on each one just to give it uh, that uh, slight amount of lubrication. Because I polish the inside of these it, uh, and the balls are, themselves are polished as well, it, uh, it, it has a virtually no friction, but a little bit of uh, whey oil just uh, helps uh, make sure that the whole thing's really running quite loose. And with these really strong magnets, um, they're not, it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so I hope you found uh, this uh, video interesting. And um, there you go. All right, thanks for watching. Bed leveling version two magball arms. First print test of version two bank ball arms.